Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your weekly update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim, and today is part of our two-part conversation with Goodwill of Southern California and their work on transforming lives the power of work and employment. Our guests are Luis Castañón, Senior Director of Strategic Operations for Goodwill of Southern California, Alejandro Garcia, Career Service Specialist, and uh, Alicia Vargas Fares at Arco Brand Management. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy that you're here as part of this two-part discussion. We had uh, a previous discussion on Tuesday with uh, your chief executive, uh, board chair, the uh, person in charge of impact. And now we get to talk uh, with the front line. And so um, I'd like to actually start with you, Alejandro, because you've experienced the program. You are now uh, helping others to experience the program. You're the star. You're the star. You get top billing. So <laughs> could, could we talk a little bit about your experience um, and how you have um, you entered the program, um, the conditions under which you entered the program, and, and just give us a, a brief description of your arc to where you are today. You know, um, I came into the program, you know, as a trainee. Um, I was in, you know, basically uh, in prison for quite some time, um, for five years prior to me coming back to the workforce. But one of the things is that I believe, um, you know, like Goodwill stands, you know, changing lives through the power of work is one of the things that is very, very powerful and essential. I believe in that today very much due to the fact of the impact that it had with me. Um, when I was a kid, my mother had to work two jobs, you know, in order to sustain the home. And due to that, um, I wasn't able to um, pretty much have that communication with her. And I started seeking out something else, um, you know, for that attention that I was lacking at home. Therefore, um, I ventured out to, you know, gangs and, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, like crime and different things like that that just took my life to, you know, for the worst. Um, I was heavily involved in different, like, criminal activities. Therefore, um, you know, just to try to help my mom out, you know, to make ends meet. Um, you know, due to the fact that she wasn't there growing up, you know, was something very powerful. Therefore, uh, I believe that if she would have been able to have employment in a, you know, a, paying, a good paying job, something that would allow her to, you know, pretty much have the time and flexibility to work with us and be in our lives a little bit more, you know, things would have been a lot different, you know, so I believe in the power of work of transforming lives, you know, because it's a ripple effect, you know, if, if the parent has, you know, st stability, is able to provide for their family, you know, without having to, you know, work their fingers to the bone, you know, it's one of the things that, that would help, you know, pretty much break the cycle of, of you know, pretty much of, you know, poverty, you know, taking people outside of that, you know, giving them a better education. So I believe it all starts with that, with work. Um, I ended up, you know, coming um, to somewhat of my senses when I didn't have one due to the fact that my mother was pretty much my conscious when I didn't have one. You know, and, and everything that I was doing was filtered through that. Um, when I came to Goodwill, it was because it, it was like my last resort. After being in prison, nobody was giving me the opportunity to work. I wanted to work. I was going to school. I was trying to do the best that I possibly could. But because of my background, people were not giving me the opportunity. Um, I, I decided, you know, I joined the program. Um, at Good, um, I was incarcerated at the time when I was introduced to the program and I heard about Goodwill. Um, I, I, I said, well, let me go into this, you know, like last resort, one of the last things I was in kind of borderline, um, you know, going back into the same thing because I didn't know anything aside from that. So I went into uh, the program. I learned about it. I was trained through the National Retail Federation with Goodwill. Um, they gave me the opportunity to work at one of the stores. And, you know, something inside of me just sparked the interest to want to help somebody else. And, you know, I was provided with that platform, you know, through, you know, working at the stores where we generate um, money to pretty much provide for these programs. Right. You know? So I would definitely, I was like, yeah, you know what, I'll do it. I'll do it, you know, and just because the effect that it had on me, I wanted to do that so we could pay it forward to somebody else. I seen the impact that it had on me. And I decided to go back to school, became a drug and alcohol counselor. I started, um, you know, working at, at uh, different, different um, places you know, just as a volunteer, just to gain more insight within myself. Um, in prison, uh, I, I was a substance abuse mentor for 
for pretty much all my peers that were there. And so it, it kind of started, you know, to motivate me to push further. And now that I'm working at, at the WCB section of Goodwill um, and being in the front lines, I'm pretty much now helping run the program that I came through, you know, giving them, you know, the double side of it, you know, as a participant and also, you know, as somebody that's in a position to help them transform their lives. So um, with Goodwill, I was able to get that platform and just move forward from there. Um, but, you know, it, yes. it's, it's so it's so interesting how you describe your own journey, right? It's it's the loneliness of a child who cannot have enough time, the time that they need with their mother, and then that loneliness driving you to um, to create associations that were not great associations, and then through that next phase of your life, figuring that out, and then reshaping your associations, reshaping your attitudes, coming out and not being given a, a chance based on that change until you find community again. Community, community is so important. Uh, Luis, when, when you look at how Goodwill shapes um, your work, do you take the, um, the, the kind of, of story that Alejandro uh, speaks about about the community, the whole idea of peer counseling, and and um, this this idea of of creating a support network is is that how you you function, or is it more transactional? Because there is a transactional element here, as as Alejandro said, right? You know, you've got you're, you're working in retail, you know, people are buying and selling, but there's also this community piece. How do you how do you deal with that? I mean, I, excuse me, I think we do both, right? I think there is a transactional piece to this because we do operate under a federal system. So we have certain outcomes that we have to meet, certain things that we have to complete for our funding, but there is also the transformational piece of our work. And that transformational piece really starts with people who have lived that experience, right? If we're really gonna transform people, transform lives and motivate individuals for a higher purpose, they need to be able to see themselves in others. And the way that you see yourselves in others is by seeing yourself with someone who went through that experience, who shares that experience with you and can talk to you, talk to you about those challenges that you're going to face, right? Because it's not easy, especially, you know, any of the barriers that our, that our participants face, everything from just experiencing homelessness, uh, food insecurity, folks who have been formerly incarcerated, right? All of these are just, heavy things to deal with on a regular basis and navigating systems, navigating doors that sometimes are close to you because people just make assumptions of who you are. All those things um, really, um, you know, bog people down and people, you know, sometimes lose motivation because of that. But if they're able to see that someone who was homeless, who was formerly incarcerated, was able to transform gain a job, move, move along their own career pathway and start to make those positive changes for themselves and their families. That's, that's really, I think, what we try to uh, create within our program. So there are, um, our programs uh, have that cohort uh, model within them as well. We have workshops that everyone sort of participates and we really try to create that network with individuals. We are looking at different behavioral uh, curriculums as well. Um, and really we just, the, the, the purpose of trying to figure out what might work for different individuals, different populations, uh, so that we can get to that transformational piece as well. And then you have this, this whole issue of demand versus supply, right? You have huge numbers of people who need jobs, particularly now in this COVID era. We have a huge prison population, which means that every year, a huge number of people are exiting. And many of them, like you, Alejandro, are trying to change their, their trajectory. But the supply of jobs always trails behind. And there are attitudes that we all have. There are fears and uncertainties that we all have if we're employers. Uh, Alicia, how do you deal with that? You're, you're, you're part of an organization that has a mass franchise model. And, and so you're actually acting as an interlocutor. How does that work uh, over at ARCO? So our franchise model is pretty interesting. It's pretty unique. Um, they actually own every site. And so in that respect, they handle the hiring process as well. 
Um, from our perspective, we've been working with Goodwill since 2016. And um, throughout that time, we've had an opportunity to educate our franchisees. That's the first line of our commitment with Goodwill is right to help educate our franchisees and then have them and their staff educate the community. So it's kind of a, it's a very interesting, very detailed, um, detailed process, if you will. So when our franchisees are learning a little bit more about the caliber of candidates that come from Goodwill with the training processes, et cetera, um, that really, it really invites for a lot more um, hiring. So from our perspective, we actually had to meet, we got to meet a lot of really great people in, in this whole campaign. Um, we met Miss Robbie, who was form formerly homeless and um, she's perfectly imperfect is what I call her because you hear her story. She's so engaging and she shared her story now how she helps educate everyone, um, you know, from her perspective that touches goodwill through her um, LA Rise program. And so she shares that knowledge when we go and we, we talk about the campaign that we do every October. And it was just, it's, it's really impactful because these testimonials is really what helps educate our franchisees who then have the hiring opportunities with Goodwill. So when, when you look at our prison population here in the United States, um, we have a, a huge issue every single year. Um, how do we deal with that in a way where, you know, if, 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 if prison becomes a, a communal death sentence where you can't get a job, Right? You can't vote. You can't, you can't operate normally. We are creating our own recidivism problem because when people have no other choice, they're going to take the only choice that's left. So how do we create more choice in this society? How do we, how do we get there? And I, I'm just going to throw it open to anybody who wants to answer this because I don't think that any of us here have the solution, but but how do we approach the problem? Um, I've worked in criminal justice reform since 2008. And, um, you know, even just working with things like ban the box, right, which is that question that just limit someone's even ability to apply to jobs. Um, yeah, the box, the box is the little check box that is almost on, on most employment forms that say, have you, have you ever uh, been involved with the criminal justice system? And yeah. as soon as you ask, it's like, oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we don't have any jobs anymore. Yeah, you know, I as a my first job out of college was as a recruiter, and I remember some of the conversations where someone would click that box, and the training was like, "Well, you just put that that application at the bottom, right? We'll call them if we need to, but if not, it doesn't happen." And there's something wrong with that because there's people who have just great skills, are highly motivated, want that chance, but they're oftentimes not given even the opportunity to compete uh, fairly for for a job in that way. But I think to your question about how do we help solve for this, it really comes down to a, a systems change, right? How do we change systems for them to be more efficient and effective to what we actually need on the, on the back end to get individuals with high skills into the jobs that we need? Because we have a lot of jobs, uh, but we don't have the individuals that, that necessarily have those skills. If we, were to able, if we were able to start some career pathway programs, within prison systems, within jails, right? Within all those uh, different systems um, and really um, um, train individuals for the jobs that we need. I mean, that would help solve a lot of those issues. They would become highly skilled individuals who are then able to exit out. And then on the other side is how do we work with employers to create that culture of learning and support so that they know someone is coming to their, uh, their, their, uh, their company and they might have barriers. They might have a parole officer or they might have to you know, check in with someone or they might even have an ankle monitor that they have to, that they have to uh, charge every eight hours, right? Just really giving them the opportunity to know what to expect so that they can then make those decisions and help to create that, that supportive culture within those companies. And that's, I think, what Goodwill is doing because not only, not only are we an employer, but we're also a workforce, I would say the largest workforce development agency here in Southern California. So we're able to work with our, our colleagues, our employer uh, colleagues, but we're also able to work with the community to try to make those, those changes within the system and within our programming as well. Not only are we practitioners of what we practice, but we also try to promote policy and advocacy change as well for the different avenues that we have because we do have that that brand recognition that employer yeah. sort of title as well so it gives us the ability to sort of do both 
Alejandro, if, if, if I'm an employer and I'm just worried, none of my family have ever been in prison. Um, uh, and I am uh, really concerned. I'm a little frightened. Um, I'm, I, I look at my business um, and I'm thinking, you know, I don't have a lot because I'm a small business uh, and what I have, I have, to, I have to really guard. I don't want to take any risks. I've got enough risks right now. What would you say to me if, if you're sitting across from me and I'm looking at this form, the box is on the form, you filled out the box truthfully, and you're talking with me, which often doesn't even happen. What would you say to me? I would say that, you know, we all have made mistakes in our past, you know, and I'm pretty sure we all have seek for forgiveness and we are really like remorseful for what we've done. Um, so basically what I would do is uh, I would like to be forgiven. And I'm pretty sure somebody else would like to have that same opportunity to be forgiven. We've all done something in our past that we might not be happy about, might not be something that that's just turns into like turmoil and we want to seek forgiveness from somebody else that we might have hurt and just you know just how i would want to somebody to forgive me i'm willing to forgive somebody else you know and it's kind of like in a way of saying you know what if we're able to um you know seek out for that forgiveness because we know that we've messed up before and we you know we've all fall but you know we've also you know seen uh for redemption to be better you know and we want to be forgiven so to me, the, the biggest thing would be like, think about yourself when a time when you've done something that you wanted to be forgiven for because you're truly remorseful for it and you've never went and you will not go back to doing the same thing. All you want to do is grow from that experience. You know, so to provide that that, um, that support between each other, just to move forward. That's probably one of the answers that I would give a person just so they could understand that it's not just the business, it's also a person that you're dealing with. Um, and, you know, just to see a different avenues when it comes to, to that, what can we do? What can we work with? You know, are we able to, um, you know, pretty much, you know, have something said between you and I that's gonna help us build trust? You know, and maybe that'll change the dynamic of the person, how he thinks, maybe the way that he hires us. Um, those are just some of the things that I might bring up to the um, employer if I'm sitting, you know, you don't before them and if they wanna ask me about that question. Um, and Alicia, if, if I'm a franchisee and I go to you and I say, you know, I, look, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you're messing with my business. You're, you're asking me to take a risk. Um, I'm just not, uh, you know, uh, Alejandro is a nice guy, but, you know, come on. I, 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 there are a lot of unemployed people, you know, good for you, but, but, but you're messing with me, right? You're messing with my business. Yeah, so I think this is where the education process comes into play. And this is why we love partnering with Goodwill and Arco. So um, we got to know, again, we got to know a lot of the, the franchise, we got to look, get to know a lot of the candidates from Goodwill, as well as the people that work behind the scenes at Goodwill. I think that their program is pretty robust at Goodwill. I think that um, if people learned a little bit more about the rehabilitation program that they have um, and how well thought of the candidates that you ultimately get are, right? I think that's a big piece that I think is missing that maybe people don't know about. I can tell you um, from our perspective, one of the first people that I, I met personally, Robert Dixon, um, we heard his story and there was not a dry eye in the, in the room. His best day was, and he, he was a second chance person, right? So he was a, check, a second chancer is what we called him. Um, and his best day that he said, was the day that he got to write his first rent check on his own. And that, he was in his 40s, right? How great is that, something like that? And if you can provide something like that for somebody, and he, from what I understand, he's still at it. He is still really driven. He's moving up the ranks. He's a testimonial to the type of people that Goodwill helped to train. And from that perspective, as an employer, that's what you're looking for, you know? And again, it just goes back, it's a, te it's a testament to goodwill and the processes that they go through. That's why we really believe in them because they really do help the community. And that's what ARCO is all about. We really, really wanna focus on the community because that's where we do business, right? So if everyone's employed, everyone's happy, right? So it's just, it's a matter of education really for, for I think the employers, you know? and um, I think that if they just take the time to learn a little bit more and maybe that would help ease their tension about or inhibitions about hiring someone. 
You know, uh, it, it is good that, that when we took our poll, 90% of the respondents said that they are aware of Goodwill's uh, workforce development work. Um, I think that, that you're all um, uh, making two fundamental points. One is very obvious. We talk about forgiveness, but it's easier to talk about it than to actually do it. Um, and, and so we really have to de reach deep within ourselves. If, if we're talking about second chance, if we're talking about forgiveness, if we're talking about paying your debt for society, do we really believe it in terms of how we act? And I think we all individually have to query ourselves. But there's another piece here, which is the redefinition of what patriotism is. If we are going to make America stronger, we have to make America stronger in a way that includes all of our people that think about strengthening communities in ways that causes each of us to take uh, a risk uh, on behalf of the country and, and on behalf of people. You know, I, uh, I'm a white guy, right? I've not been in prison. I need to take a risk. I need to reach across and try to understand somebody else's life and help, right? So that they can help me. Right? We've, got to, we've got to hang together. We are a social compact. And I think, Luis, that's kind of what Goodwill, its partners, Alejandro, your partner as well, everybody who is part of this, right? the donors, the people who buy from Goodwill, who mm -hmm. their goods, we're all partners. We can pull together, can't we? Um, you know, I was, I was going to, um, something that you said there is that I think what you're getting at is that everyone's very unique, right? We're all in unique individuals and we require unique solutions for the things that we're going through. And sometimes, you know, um, our systems, especially at the federal level, they're very prescribed, uh, almost cookie cutter in that way. And I think what what uh, is very unique about Goodwill, um, you know, the fact that we can gen generate some income from our stores to support this work, but also that we can partner with, you know, ARCO and other employers and that individuals also give to us, it gives us the ability to be flexible and to provide uh, tailored uh, specific solutions for individuals because our workforce system, our, our, our federal workforce system only um, is, is, it's only a one year program, right? So you, you have to exit and enter within that one year. And let's say you enter five months into the program you we can't extend it you have to finish within five months i think the mm -hmm. flexibility that we have with goodwill and the the flexible funding that you know donors and, and everyone supports us and grants is that it gives us the ability to look at someone and not think about a prescribed timeline but really look at them and figure out okay what's the best solution for you and is it going to be a a three-month solution or is it going to be a one two-year solution but we're, we're going to be there for that person and make sure that they're receiving the support that they need because sometimes the support is you know i just need a grocery cart or i need my car broke down our federal system yeah. doesn't uh, uh, allow for someone's card to just get paid like that you know but we're able to fix someone's card because we know that they're on that right path and we know that that, that individual just needs that extra support and that flexibility uh, from those discretionary dollars really gives us the ability to serve individuals um, for, for more than just a year or a few months that we have within some of the prescribed systems um, so we've got a comment that was really interesting um, uh, uh, coming from uh, Stacey Buchanan, who said that, that there's a risk when you hire anyone, right? That they're not going to be able to do the job. Uh, they turn out to make claims that are not true. Um, somebody who is really putting themselves on the line, who is going out to interview after interview after interview, who is seeking to transform, you have a motivation there that is just irreplaceable. Uh, and Alejandro, you you lived that. How did how did you end up uh, processing that? And and able, how were you able to communicate that motivation to others? The way that I'm able to communicate that to others is to um, pretty much, you know, I I tell them everybody when we're when we're younger, when we're kids, you know, we think about what you know they ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, what is it that you ultimately want to do for the rest of your life, right? And so one of the things that I try to do is to help spark that and, and have them reconnect with that side of them, you know, so they can take them back to that, to their true selves, you know, to what, like the purity that they had when they were younger, you know, so just to have that initiative, like within them, that's enough for them to um, move forward, 
And sometimes we provide that support, we provide that tailored, you know, support like Luis was talking about, that we could just help them, you know, in the areas where it's needed. You know, uh, a person might have, they all have different needs, like he stated. And just addressing these needs, um, give them the support. As long as you have some support, somebody that's there to provide that for you, you have this, this network and you feel confident to move forward. Now, if you're surrounding yourself with people that are, you know, pretty much are not doing this, you know, and they're stuck in the same thing and that rut, but you have that inside of you, like you want to be better, it, it, just, it only takes like one word, one to, you know, just something to get you out of that. And, you know, as long as we provide that support to provide the network, we're able to move forward with that. I had individuals that have come, I work with people that are just currently incarcerated or have just gotten out of prison. And one of the things that they struggle with the most is getting employment, right? But the, the way the system has set it up is to where, you know, they ask you, well, have you been convicted of a felony? Have you done this? Do you have experience or whatnot? And a lot of times, you know, because of the way the system has been built, you know, participants, they don't want to give themselves the chance. So I tell them, how can you not give yourself a chance and expect somebody else to give it to you? You got to give yourself that chance first, you know? So, and, and, you know, just having, you know, conversations with them, you know, just to pretty much address certain things and help guide them and give them that support of confidence. I believe that's a, one of the biggest impact because it has to start within yourself. Alicia, I saw that you were, uh, you were nodding vigorously. Uh, we're going, uh, I'd love for you to comment on this from the pr perspective of, of the interlocutor between employers and and uh, people who are job seekers and, and goodwill and then uh, Luis I'll give you the last word uh, Alicia could you could you just comment on on this whole idea of how do you how do you deal with with this um, this question of, of advocating for a program um, that will cause somebody to take uh, the, a risk with their business but a good risk a good risk. Yes. Well, I think Alejandro is a great testimonial for that. I mean, he wants to work. The first, the first piece of this puzzle is wanting to work, right? That right there, I think, changes the dynamic of is this person, what's the, the history of this person? If the person really wants to go in there and do their job, do it well, there you go. That's what the best you can ask for. I mean, that's why we run campaigns like the Do Goodwill campaign that we have, um, that we do every October, because we do believe in people like Alejandro. We do believe in people like Miss Robbie. We do believe in people like Robert Dixon. We want to make sure that these people are able to get the training that they need and do good in the community. That's what it comes down to. And I think part of the point is that these people are not the exception. They're not. When you're coming out and you are motivated, that's not the exception. That is the rule. There's a lot that is left absolutely still, still available. We just took two, uh, two polls. And one was um, the assessment of the biggest problem faced by job seekers. And the other was, and we asked the same questions, uh, what are the biggest issues faced by job providers? Right. What was interesting here is that on the job seeking piece, there's lack of educational skills, the comp is too low, yes. few jobs are it, it, it kind of was, was pretty even, although few jobs being available was the biggest issue. Now, what's interesting is that when we inflected that to people who had jobs to provide, it was all about skills. And that is the Will's whole bailiwick, right, Luis? So, so could you talk about, about that aspect? If, if we have people out there with the will, like Alejandra, and if job uh, people who have jobs are seeking skills, uh, talk a little bit about how you shape your programs to fill that gap as well. Well, I mean, that, that truly is the future of education, right? Is that how do we combine work and learning at the same time? And Goodwill has actually, through uh, discretionary funds and through some of the funding that we get through our partners and donations, we were able to create an apprenticeship program. So we are now a registered apprenticeship program provider with the US Department of Labor and with California Division of Apprenticeship Standards. And so we are pro putting individuals in jobs, training them right through a, through a, a curriculum uh, for a year, which helps with, re with retention on the employer side. 
but then we give them those skills and then they become then an, an expert in that in that profession or in that occupation once they're completed. But we really wouldn't be able to do that because there isn't a lot of funding to explore or to innovate or ideate when it comes to trying to solve these really complex issues of, of education and skills attainment. And for us having the flexibility to just try and we actually, the, the, the apprenticeship program is the third iter iteration of several things that we tried that didn't work. And within the workforce system, they don't give you funding to not work, right? Everything has to work. And so for us, the flexibility to try different solutions, to try to really solve the complex problems that employers have and that job seekers have, that's really what we, what we do. And every donation, everything that you buy at the store, right? All those things that, that you uh, provide, uh, your support that you provide when you go to Goodwill help us, helps us to really look at this uh, differently. And we cover three counties. We're in LA, San Bernardino mm -hmm. and Riverside. From Antelope Valley to Victorville, right? We're in all these communities. And so each community is very different. Each community uh, has a very unique solution that they need to help, that they need help with. And we, we really try to be um, that conduit, right? That, that intermediary to help connect systems, connect partners, because we've been here for over a hundred years and we're gonna be here for another hundred years, right? Uh, being sort of a steward within the region and just everyone's support of our stores, of our workforce programs, donating, all that really goes to help to solve these really um, complex problems that we have within our own community, but also just largely within our country as well. If I may, though, too, I think that one of, um, so Goodwill is, is more than just second chance, um, more than homeless. It's also vets. Um, so veterans are actually helped out as well. And so I, I, know, I know that for our constituents, it's, it's a big deal, right? And that's part of what makes Goodwill so appealing. It crosses off everyone's personal wants and needs that they want to help. And I think that that's something that people really don't know about. So if you're a corporation like Arco, I mean, that's, we, are, we really care about the vets. We really care about second chances. Again, anyone that's in the community, right? And the vets are a big part of our community, which we really haven't talked about today, but I think that's an important piece that we should really you know, educate ourselves on and understand that they encompass everybody. They really don't turn anyone away. And that's what makes, I mean, Arco and Goodwill great partners, right? So. <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank you all, Luis uh, Castañon, Senior Director of Strategic Operations for Goodwill of Southern California, Alejandro Garcia, Career Service Specialist, who's gone through the program himself, and Alicia Vargas Farris of Arco Brand Management. Thank you so much for your insights. And I guess the message here is give to Goodwill, yes. give your products to Goodwill, buy from Goodwill, it's the small act actions that can help to heal, employ through goodwill. Um, the, the work that you're doing is so valuable to a truly strong and inclusive America. Thank you so much. That's the nonprofit report. Attendees, thank you for coming, and we'll see you again on Tuesday. Mm -hmm.